Hello, this is Tim Law with Playing It Forward Coaching, always encouraging your self-reliance. If you develop a marketable skill, chase that skill with a good work ethic and people and communication skills, always go the extra mile. You'll be amazed on what you can accomplish here in this country. A big thank you to over 560 people who subscribe to this channel, Playing It Forward Coaching. If you haven't already, I uh, appreciate it if you would. I have a very uh, awesome uh, friend and cousin of mine, uh, John Hurley, out of uh, Oxford, uh, Maryland, who is going to tell us a story that, you know, his, his story regarding Parkinson's. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a unique one. And again, I'm very much looking forward to this. I was blessed to see him uh, this past uh, Saturday. We had a wonderful family reunion and we really had a chance to catch up. And I uh, kind of asked John at that point if, if he'd be willing to do uh, an interview just to help educate people about this um, you know, his, his story and Parkinson. So John, welcome. And tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your experience here. Well, thanks, Tim. It's a, it's an honor to be asked to be on your, uh, your network here. Um, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's about 15 years ago and I was, uh, 63 at the time. I'm now 77 and uh, going on 78. And, um, it's been a journey, I have to say, but it's, it's not been a journey without its rewards. And I think the thing that I, I, I feel is, uh, I'll talk a little bit about Parkinson's for those who don't know what it is in a minute, but, um, the thing that I've always felt about Parkinson's is, is like, it's a, even though it's a disease with no known cure, there are things you can do to improve your quality of your life. Uh, you, you build self-efficacy, which really means being able to take care of things that, you know, take charge of your own life. Um, Parkinson's disease uh, is a, a disease with no known uh, provable reason uh, for its, uh, why it's there. It can't be detected uh, in a medical uh, exam. It can only be a, a detected or named, I guess, through observation of the person uh, that, there are, that is being uh, tested for this. Um, there are certain characteristics um, that are common, although not universal, with people with Parkinson's. And one is a, a tremor in which the hand, my hand is just probably can't really see it, but it's got a slight tremor in it. One is uh, rigidity, where the body becomes more and more confined and less and less flexible. Um, slowness, which they call bradykinesia, which things you just move more slowly. And then there's a host of other, those are what I'll be called motor symptoms, meaning there are symptoms that are uh, have to do with the movement of the body. There is a host of other non-motor symptoms as well, which uh, and are uh, unique a unique set of cards for every every individual. And by that I mean that there's no two. The saying goes is if you've seen one person with Parkinson's, you've seen one person with Parkinson's, because everybody's going to present differently. Mm -hmm. So there is medication that has been in, in place for. Oh, really? Half a century now, but it is uh, good at, at helping to reduce the symptoms, but nothing that really stops regression or cures it. Um, in a simple neurological dis discussion or explanation, um, our dopamine, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that our brain needs, our brain uh, uh, creates. And distributes throughout the body, and it's it's uh, it's the communication tool that's necessary for, for movement of, of, at all. And at some point in time, the body the brain stops making dopamine, and uh, and so that's when all these symptoms begin to emerge. Um, the medication that is most helpful for treating it right now is a medication called levodopa, which um, is a precursor for dopamine. And is is able to break through the brain blood barrier um, to get inside the uh, the brain um, as levodopa, um, and then convert itself to dopamine to um, help you know replace the dopamine that the body is no longer making. Um, well, well, John. Uh... Obviously, you know, you and I have known each other for, for many, many years. And the uh, most uh, impressive thing is not only your courage, but the idea that 
uh, as far as uh, you know, mental, your mind is is uh, is, is is sharp and it's uh, very very uh, solid as as I've always remembered you and everything. And I think your explanation of uh, you know Parkinson's is uh, is is excellent. So uh, now, how, tell us a little bit more about your story. You said it started about fifteen years ago, and um, you know how did how did uh, you, you kind of come across this as far as your particular experience was concerned? Well, I'll start it, or at least uh, this journey started when in a, an annual physical, my little finger in my left hand was twitching. I went in to see my doctor, and I said, uh, "Doctor, what do you think this is?" And he looked at it, and he said. Oh, it's probably nothing. It's probably essential tremor. It says we'll keep an eye on it, and um, but it didn't go away. So probably the next time I went to see him, I at that point was concerned. I said, "Is this the start of Parkinson's disease?" He says, "Well, I can't tell you. There may be other things about something called essential tremor or other things that could present this symptom, but let me send you to a neurologist." So he referred me to a neurologist, just a general neurologist who. Um, um, I saw four times over the period of nearly two years. And each time I went, he said, it may be, but I can't tell you for sure yet. Just as the symptoms increased. And then the day came that I went in and I said, with additional things to report to him, I says, doc, this is what's going on. He said, it always struck me the way he said this, nine out of 10 of my peer peers uh, at the George Washington University Hospital would agree with me that you have Parkinson's disease. Just a funny way to couch it. Um, but I remember walking out of that, um, that his office and uh, he said, you know, he actually recommended, he says, I would go get checked by um, a movement disorder specialist, which is a specialty within the neurology field that, that really focuses on Parkinson's disease and other similar diseases of, of, that affect the movement of the body. Um, but as I went out to my car, I sat in my car and it was, I can re remember it raining lately, it was springtime. Um, I sort of was processing this myself and trying to figure out what am I going to do from here? Because um, at that point, I didn't really know anything, much of anything about it. And it was just really frightening. Uh, but I sat there and I, I it, it just hit me, Tim, uh, I, this thought that, you know, John, if you're open to it, there's a blessing for you here someplace. And I found that it really has been a blessing for me in ways that I hadn't expected. And um, by that, it means I've been, I've been able to connect with a, another a set of people who are involved with Parkinson's, either people who are themselves uh, have Parkinson's or who um, work in the field. Um, and uh, for example, I, I've been a patient advocate on, uh, at the University of Maryland in, in Baltimore Hospital with an annual symposium we put on to um, you know, present information for people with Parkinson's disease. And, and, and getting involved with that in advocacy programs has been, uh, I think something that's been very worthwhile for me. And, um, and just learning how to accept my own uh, changes in my, myself, my body over the years has, has been, a, a, I would say a blessing too. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And uh, what what uh, you you come from a large family, John? Uh, you know, you're the oldest of uh, six in your family. I'm the oldest of six in mine. Where I think we're second cousins because our dads were first cousins. Um, what? Um, how is right. what's been the reaction of, of friends and family? I would say universally pretty positive. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people that I know. Not these are not people that are close to me in my life that I. I think are, are scared when they hear of it. It, it. it sounds threatening to them to know some, meet somebody that has a, a disease, even though of course it's not communicable. Um, uh, and but my family has been terrific. My, my wife, Susie has just been super supportive of me. Um, and it's just been the right combination because I want to be as independent as I can, as long as I can. Mm -hmm. When I need some help or assistance in doing something, um, then you know she's there to she's there for me. Uh, one simple thing. This this is something that has happened over time. My manual dexterity has really been affected. So even putting on this shirt and buttoning it up in the morning mm -hmm. takes me quite a while. And uh, unless we're going out to dinner with somebody like that, I'll I'll spend ten minutes to do it. 
if I need to. Whereas if I ask Susie, she'll come over, she'll do it in 30 seconds. <laughs> but um, she, she won't um, she won't bug me if I feel like I want to get this done myself. Mm -hmm. I've learned patience and perseverance in these in small ways. Sure. As well. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's just so many, um, uh, again, as I mentioned to you, you know, off camera and everything, you know, a lot of us is geared toward teens and young adults. And, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, like I said, perseverance and everything along those lines, we all have challenges in life for sure, some more than others and that type of thing. And, and again, I have to really applaud you as far as, um, you know, everything that, that you're doing to, you know, to, like you say, to improve the quality as far as your life's concerned. Um, any, any other uh, thoughts, John? I mean, this, is, this has been wonderful. Uh, and any additional things you'd like to share with us here before we uh, conclude? I'd say uh, if I was speaking to young people, um, you probably have heard the word Parkinson's disease because it's very common. It's actually the largest, fastest growing neurological disorder in the, in the United States. And um, more and more younger people are being affected by it. Like Michael J. Fox was only 29 when he was diagnosed with mm -hmm, Parkinson's sure. disease. I say, but um, but it's just give understanding to people that you know that may have it, and uh, and if if somehow someone in your family is diagnosed with it, then um, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And I wish everybody, you know, good path, good fortune in their path. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and having the support of your friends and family, obviously, uh, you know, certainly has had to mean a lot to you, John. Yeah, it certainly has, Tim. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great to see. Yeah. Absolutely. Any last second thoughts, John, before we can c conclude? And, and please uh, stick around after I stop the recording, please. Uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me. This has been, I, I appreciate your asking me these questions. I don't talk about it that often. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being on here. And again, this is probably going to be one of the more um, unusual uh, interviews that, that I've done. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate, again, your your courage and uh, perseverance, you know, for coming on and, uh, you know, sharing sharing this with uh, with a lot of people. I do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.